everybody. My name is Carlos. Welcome to My Life Without Limits. Another wonderful episode this morning. It's not that chilly outside, kind of. So I sure Ooh, hope you guys you. are enjoying your uh, day. But I want to welcome our co-host this morning, Leah, which uh, mm -hmm. right before, right when we're recording this episode, it's the day before she's leaving somewhere nice. Right, and uh, a few days. <laughs> you're not taking me. Thank you very much. No, I once again I'm leaving, and I'm not taking you. <laughs> yeah, you're not taking me. That's okay. No, no that's okay. I'm I hope sorry. you. I hope you really enjoy it. I think it's a. Thank you. It's a wonderful place that you're going. And yes. uh, other than that, how are you doing? I'm good. Like you said, the weather's been really nice, really yeah. mild for for our winter, and you can tell that the sun is shining on me right now. It is. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, everything's been good. That's awesome. Thanks. That's great. Yeah, it's uh, it's a nice weather. It's nice to walk around. A little bit icy at some points, but mm, yes. uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's part of it's part of living in Alberta, I guess. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. um, you do. We do have a wonderful guest that this time you did not actually found her. As far as I know, I think <laughs> she, I think she reached out to us, and um, so which is pretty exciting because usually. Leah here is the one that stalks people on Stop Facebook <laughs> or uh, or on Instagram. So uh, this time, uh, our wonderful guest uh, reached out to, I believe, to her website or to yeah. her, yeah, to her website. Yeah, her and website. then Leah got the message and sent it to me and says, hey, we have a fan now. And I said, oh, cool. <laughs> we have and, a fan. And, and, and it's not my mom. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, not your, it's not your mom, which is one of the biggest fans we have. So yes. <laughs> um, a big shout out to her too. Um, we do have a wonderful guest, like I said, and I want you to introduce it to all of our audience so that we know who she is. And, I'm excited. And yeah. We're yeah. very excited for sure. Yes, very excited to have a new friend. And it's always nice when we get a message like that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very interested to hear how she came up across everything and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, she's been listening to our podcast. And I was like, woo! <laughs> I know that we're doing well. We've got lots of downloads and stuff. But still, you just never know, you know, who's out there listening. So I'm very excited to welcome Kiara here to our um podcast welcome oh, hi. <laughs> so excited I'm surprised I hadn't come okay. across you before um oh, being you being on what? TikTok and I'm on TikTok yeah. I don't do TikTok but I'm on TikTok all the time so yeah I'm surprised I haven't come across you but I'm glad that you reached out yeah I I've been listening to you guys for a while um but it probably is because I just moved to Edmonton too, right? I was living in Slave Lake for the longest time. Right, but right. Yeah, I'm super uh, excited to be here. Yay! So how did you come across the podcast? Did you, I do you follow us on um, like the, the association on yes, I social do. media? Yeah, I was, I always had the CP Foundation like on my Instagram and then I was looking around because I was looking for a podcast originally to listen to and I couldn't find one like the one like ones that I actually enjoyed listening to and then yeah. I came across you guys and I like I don't know I'll do my homework or I'll literally just like cook while listening to you guys I really like the oh, last well, one you. you guys posted so yeah uh, I, was really, I was really nervous reaching out but I'm glad I did thank I'm you so much. glad that you did like this is awesome this is like my exactly what we go for like this is what we want mm -hmm. people to just reach out and say hey I've got a story to tell and and that's why we're here so I'm like I've got like butterflies now. I'm nervous because I feel like <laughs> I want us to live up to you know, what your episode to be just as good as everybody else's that you've enjoyed. So, so yay. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess just tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's learn about okay. you. Okay. I mean, there's not much to. I I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. But <laughs> That's uh, crazy, um, um, um. I'm 20 years old. I just moved mm -hmm. to Edmonton and I do have cerebral palsy, uh, spastic hemiplegia. And honestly, I never really started posting TikToks until COVID because in my small town, there wasn't any like supports 
for disabled individuals. Mm -hmm. And for myself, I'm a very mild case. Like if you look at me on the street, I don't look like I have a disability. And Mm -hmm. so growing up, I was always kind of pushed aside because I wasn't the first person that needed help. And um, when COVID started happening and uh, quarantining, I felt very isolated. And honestly, I was on TikTok. I was trying to do dances. And Mm. I was like, hey, I'm not getting, like, I'm not famous. Why am I not famous? (laughs) And then then I saw um, someone, I can't remember her username but she was posting about her cp and it was one of the first times i ever really seen someone posting so openly on social media Mm -hmm. and i got stuck in the loop of like watching her videos all the time and then i decided to post one video and i remember it it's really vivid in my mind and um that blew up that got me like 500 views and i was like awesome what (laughs) I know right (laughs) yeah and I I, like for the longest time I was sticking around like 500 followers like not really growing and then I figured out that like there's a lot of like individuals in the disability community that is doing the exact same thing I'm doing yeah so I just kind of like like deleted most of the people I was following and just put like all the disabled creators that I was liking and it just kind of grew from there. And then, yeah, I now I'm here. I have about 35,000 on TikTok. Um, That's awesome. It's, yeah, t- like huge. Uh, TikTok's That's huge. like, it is huge. I was like, when it started, I was crying half of the time because I'm very <laughs> empathetic. I mm. was sitting there, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know if I'm the Charlie D'Amelio of TikTok, but. I'm changing, <laughs> like, I'm changing people's lives. That's I have good. My, yes. like, That's good. I'm, I have my, like, I don't know. I'd say, like, a 100 followers that I, like, recognize posting my stuff and liking my stuff. And yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm blown away. And sometimes it's, like, too much. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. It just, it's just crazy. It's crazy having yeah. that influence. It is, yes. Because then you're kind of, like, you feel like you're always on, like, Mm-hmm. It's just like, like I always like tell Carlos, yeah. like we with our well, we started TikTok for CP Alberta right before the pandemic, and then I was like, okay, well, if I'm the one running this, but now I'm just at home working, I'm like, I am not doing it because, <laughs> like, what am I gonna do on TikTok by myself? So then I put it off, but I used to put Carlos in it a bit, and I think mm-hmm. he's toying with the idea as well as starting a TikTok. Well, I I already I already downloaded the app and I already created a username, but I haven't really put any content on it yet. I have to actually think about what am I gonna do. I'm looking at other people's TikTok and seeing yeah. what I what I what I want to do. If I want to do something funny, if I want to do something serious, uh, if I'm gonna do something funny, what should be? It's it's not as well. You you're probably the expert on this, mostly when you have thirty five thousand people uh, uh, yeah, following like you. But <laughs> but uh, but it's probably not as easy as it sounds like. It's probably not as hard as it sounds like either. But it's it's you have to be. I, I, what I'm thinking, what I'm seeing is you have to be really know what you're doing and 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 pretty much have fun with it, right? So that's what I'm thinking of hoping to do. But mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see what. Uh, what, it's I a mean, habit, right? You have to kind of form a habit yeah. of remembering to to stop and go, hey, this is something I should be sharing. Like this is, yes, you know. That's 100%. There's times where I'm like, I'll be sitting on the couch and I'll be having a conversation with my partner. And I'm like, oh my gosh, someone could relate to this. Like I'm probably mm-hmm. having a problem that everyone else has. Yeah. And with the TikTok stuff, it's not like Facebook. It's not like Instagram. And that's what I grew up on. I, when TikTok came, I was like, what? I have to do (laughs) dances. I have to, I have to find views. Like what the heck? And I don't know how I picked it up like so fast, but I did. And I'm very thankful for it, but yeah, it is kind of hard. It's not hard. Okay. It's hard on your mental health in some ways because you're sharing so much. 
yeah. and then you get in the point where you're oversharing and when I was living in Slave Lake it was really hard for me because I was sharing so much I remember my first really intimate post was uh washing my hair in the shower I had my bikini on and everything yeah but it was intimate and yeah. someone like passed me on the street which I knew them from school mm-hmm. and they're like why are you po-? like they literally were like why are you posting that stuff on TikTok and I was like what do you mean and like in life, my head baby. I was like <laughs> oh my god like people in my town are seeing my stuff <laughs> and then that took a big toll on me because I was like oh my god I don't want my fifth grade crush seeing this I know right I've oh. seen a lot of people who will say like I block they, they they block anybody they know in real life on TikTok because they want to be vulnerable because it it is relatable stuff you know mm-hmm. and it's real life like you know, it's just a real life situation, but it's because that person probably never had to think about it, mm-hmm. but you're, you know, and that's what you're doing. So then, you know, what you're doing is working, but yeah, sometimes you have to, it's, it's in- interesting though, but like TikTok is huge for disabled advocates. There's so many on there so many. and it's, it's blowing even for organizations. Like we really do need to, I need to sit down, plan something out. But I've told everybody in the, in the office, yeah. like, you're all <laughs> going to be <laughs> so participating just, in some videos. <laughs> so just a small question, Kiara, right? Kiara, that's how we yeah. say your name, Kiara. So when you did your TikTok, I, I'm start, I'm going to start following you on TikTok. But when you did your TikTok that you're on the shower, watching your hair and you had your bikini on, uh, so how do you, what instruments do you use? Whether you use a GoPro, you use your phone, um, you use a, like a selfie stick. I, I'm just curious about that. So, I think the first time I had nothing. Like I didn't have a halo light. I didn't have anything. It was literally on like the toilet and it the was toilet. like, mm-hmm. like <laughs> the horriblest quality you could even imagine. But right now I do have like a halo light and like a, a tripod That's and I just that. carry that everywhere Okay. now that I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, the first time, idea. the first time you didn't have anything then you didn't have. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. It's, uh, I was just curious because I wanted to see a lot of people think, well, when you're on TikTok or you're on Instagram and you're posting videos, you got to start having like the quality camera and like the quality microphone and all the different things and ring lights and all the stuff. Even when I started the podcast with Leah, I was like, yeah, we need to do all these things and all that. And then you think about it, you sit down and you're like, but there's no, there's no, there's no finance to support this. So you have yeah. to start like, you have to start small, you know, you have to start like yeah, little totally. and then maybe later on right uh, you you end up growing mm-hmm. and and then you look at videos where youtube youtubers who are posting youtube or even tiktoks who, who are shown on youtube that are like you don't really need to have the fancy stuff when you first start mm-hmm. you can just yeah. have your your phone or you can just have your you know your whatever your webcam or whatever you have on and that's something that clicked on my mind because i was like you don't really necessarily have to have all this, but I was just curious about your experience on on, on mm-hmm. TikTok. With, we had a guy but... from CBC, like a camera guy at our dance program on the weekend, and he I had his that. camera, and then, but then he also used his phone to capture mm-hmm. some footage because he wanted to get down with a lot of the kids, and he just had like a, a tripod, like a little one that he held to stabilize it mm-hmm. and I was like isn't that interesting see it's like you don't he was using his phone and mm-hmm. you know that that's going to be quality you know so I mean yeah there's a few little things you could get Carlos but okay. you won't need to too much because I was wondering yeah, like I... so go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry no, I was no, just no, gonna no. say I I got my uh tripod and like halo light it for like 50 dollars at Costco and I've yeah. been using that for a year like nice. you don't nice. really need fancy stuff that's yeah. nice. No, yeah. it's it's great to hear because I was always panicking about how am I going to show people how am I dressing up like in the morning if you don't have the proper equipment. But then you're like, hey, people can do it on a on your phone on a tripod. It's fine, yeah. right? So it's sure. like you know, like you just have yeah. to be innovative and think, mm-hmm. you know, on on things. So it's it's always great yeah. to hear. So yeah, yeah. Um, 
I sometimes I don't even use my tripod I just kind of like put my phone anywhere and mm -hmm. honestly when it comes to the views and your like true fans I hate saying that I have fans but I actually I do <laughs> I know that's how but, I feel today too I'm like I have one fan oh my god no. <laughs> but um like they don't care about the quality they just no. want to they want to hear the truth because that's what's missing in society and no one wants to talk about how someone in a wheelchair goes to the bathroom no one wants to talk about that and no one wants to hear it too so when you are talking about real issues I think that would really pulls in people's like likes and comments because they just yeah. want to hear the truth right yeah exactly and see it truthfully which is how we like to do the podcast too we don't like to edit stuff out no. or format it we just like it to be real we want you to show who you are and you know less pressure and yeah, just totally just come hang I I yeah. think I think I I agree with you. I think I think it's it's good to be truthful in what you're saying, but I also think that because social media and I mean Leah can speak to this because she's she's a social media everywhere, but social media is so powerful and mm -hmm. that it's the whatever you're sharing is stays there, right? And whatever mm -hmm. you're sharing is like it's not gonna go away because it's already there, right? You're posting it online. You're becoming, as you mentioned, Kira, you're becoming vulnerable to mm -hmm. other people to show it to other people. And and whatever you post there, it's, it's out there. You cannot move it back. So, I mean, you could, but it stays on a... Yeah, people, some people can, people have it. People can yeah. have it. Some people can have it. People get things like so quickly. So you have to be like, I'm always really careful of like how truthful can we be because um, I'm always thinking, are we going to hurt some people's feelings? Are we not going to hurt some people's feelings? You know what I mean? So have you ever mm -hmm. had those type of thoughts like of saying, yes. am I saying things right? Am I saying th things wrong? Uh, I shouldn't say this. I should say, I should say that. How do you deal with that in this, in your, in your young age that you're. Um, honestly, I just, I'm more aware of what I put out there. Uh, it actually hit me. About a year ago, so when I lived in Slave Lake, obviously everyone knew me. I didn't have mm -hmm. to have like an issue of getting a job or anything like that because everyone knew me. But when I moved to Red Deer last year, um, I looked for a job and I got an interview and it was amazing. It was great. And like in the middle of it, she was like, so you're TikTok famous, hey? And I said, what? <laughs> she, she like, she's full-on stalked my social media which is fine whatever but she was telling me everything that I was posting and it felt like okay maybe mm -hmm. I shouldn't have posted that much because now my boss knows that like it it really hit me and um my partner Joey he was telling me like you knew what you were doing when you posted that like and it's not anything bad. She just knows like a very personal thing about you. And I yeah. said, yeah, I guess. Um, I think the stuff that I post, I am very aware of the language that I use because I think that's the biggest thing. Lots of people get hurt easily with the language. Yeah. So I always put like trigger warnings. I always mention like if I'm talking in my videos, I'll mention like, hey, this is my opinion. No one else's. If you like my opinion, right. so be it. Yeah. Um, but but I always say my page is like a safe place that I will never delete a comment just because you told me that you didn't like the word that I used or right. um, yeah. anything like that. Yeah, so it's you just have to be more aware. To it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and it's and it's true because I mean we see issues and in, in TV before. I mean, you know Don Cherry, Leah, and everybody don't know Don Cherry. What happened to him? We're not going to go into yeah. that issue, but. Because yeah. of what, because of what little thing he said, he's you know everybody you know out of the TV show is no longer too happy with Mr. Don Cherry, right? So yeah. you have yeah. to be you have to be really careful of what you're saying, and and it's always interesting because somebody who's as big as you are, Kira, on TikTok, obviously people <laughs> like it because you have this amount of of uh, people who are following you and and all the views and stuff but it's true like you have to be really aware and some tips that you're saying today is like 
use some sort of mentioning to people if you like what I'm saying this is my opinion this is not yeah anybody mm-hmm. else's or it doesn't have to be anybody else's the same thing with this podcast if we say something in this podcast that people don't like which I hope we don't but if if at some point we do you know it's it's, 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 it's our message is it, it doesn't have to be everybody else's message but you know mm-hmm. it's a bit, becoming more aware creating this podcast with with Leah here uh, mm-hmm. about the language I say and how I say it because it's 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 impactful like you're saying it's very impactful of what you're what you're talking about you know what I mean so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, Couldn't no, say it my, myself better. <laughs> That's like, I think when we're talking about disability issues, I think there's a lot of perspective and there's a lot of experiences that don't get noticed. Mm-hmm. I know with CP, I've met about seven people with cerebral palsy and only one of them I had a very close experience to. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy because even when, because I'm, with my TikTok, I reached out to a lot of females with CP and I was like, hey, you want to be friends? Want to do everything? Like, talk about it? Like, I just want someone to, like, understand what I'm going through. Yeah. And I, I can find that because every experience was so different. And, like, there's mm-hmm. some language that really offends me. I don't like hearing, uh, for example, T-Rex. I got called T-Rex when I was younger all through middle school oh, through yeah. yeah and um it was I think it was in grade like eight or nine that I started getting calls at 3 a.m of these group of boys calling me t-rex really yeah wow. and wow. with slave like being so small I know who those boys are yeah for sure oh yeah yeah, yeah for right sure. Wow. And it just, it hurts. But then I was, t- I was going through my TikTok because I posted about it. I was like, I got called T-Rex when I was younger. And I saw this one comment and it's still in my brain today. And he said, I got called T-Rex in college, but I use it as a superpower. I think it's pretty dope. And I sat there and I was like, how is that a good like superpower? Like, being called T-Rex, how is that good? But I didn't say anything like that. I just said, okay, mm-hmm. well, that's great for you. Yeah. But in my head, I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. And recently I did post on my Instagram a picture uh, um, in Drum Heller by a T-Rex yeah. fossil for me. One, and- oh, okay. one, one of the statues or one of the yes. fossil things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I posed and I did a little joke. I said, um hey it's a family reunion and it was supposed <laughs> yeah. to be like a joke yeah and I got so many likes and stuff and I was like, I know. oh my god like now awesome. yeah. I, like I'm comfortable enough to embrace that part just because of yeah. that one comment and I think yeah. that's like that's really powerful when you take talk it's but, like owning it right it's like even the word yeah. disabled how it used to be people wanted to say oh no differently abled but I think that was able-bodied people, right? That are trying to, mm-hmm. oh, let's do this. But the disabled community is like, no, we're taking ownership. It's like the fat community. Like, it's okay. You can say fat community. Mm-hmm. It, we're taking ownership of it. Like, it's it's not bad. And like the, um, a lot of amputees, they call themselves Lucky Finn. Like, they've got like a Lucky Finn um, thing, just kind of a play on Nemo who had the little fin. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, like, but I mean, you have to discover that on your time, yeah. you know, like that's not for anybody to say to you, well, no, you should embrace it. But I mean, well, to say you should embrace it is good because yeah. but you got to do that on your own time. And Leah, and, and, Leah, and Leah, you know me, I used to like the word, dislike the word disabled. I used to don't yeah. like it because <laughs> I used to be like, well, why do you, why do people use it? But since people are starting to take ownership of it and saying, well, what's wrong about saying disabled? What's wrong about saying uh, that I'm disabled, right? And mm-hmm. so I'm starting to kind of develop a little bit of a bond to it because I, I still don't call myself disabled just because it's my own personal perspective of not yeah. doing that. And if I was, yeah. you know, when I create videos on TikTok or 
YouTube or Instagram. I you won't if you see my videos, you won't see me using the word disable as much. But I started to be more open about it because you see people like like for example, you're posting or um, mm -hmm. There's another guy named Sean Chain Perska, who who he's from the United States. He uses the word disable all the time, and people really like that because he's taking ownership of that, and he's actually having fun with with his own disability. And part of the things that my mom taught me unconsciously was muck muck on your own disability, not muck it to the mm -hmm. point of like putting yourself down. But mark it to the point of having have fun with your own disability because mm -hmm. if you yeah. don't, it starts becoming a burden. And once you start becoming a burden, you're not enjoying your life anymore. Right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. so it's yeah. It's it's something that, that I started to learn. Um what 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 talking about bullying and in your previous uh like in in high school or mm -hmm. elementary or junior high, uh I know you mentioned this past, which thank you so much for sharing that about the T-Rex um, bullying. Um, I received a lot of bullying myself when I was a kid, but it's different because I used to live in Mexico and Mexico bullying is huge and you have to develop a thick skin. Uh, but what about your your life? Do you receive a lot, a lot of bullying other than that T-Rex comment? Or was it more like it kind of fade away or it was through stages how, how was your experience i think when i we when i was really young it wasn't noticeable kids are so like understanding and like so accepting at that mm -hmm. young age they but are. then once we hit puberty everyone's mm -hmm. like oh you're weird you know what i mean like yeah. they are noticing the differences yeah. and i think in middle school and going into junior high that's when the peak of bullying was that mm -hmm. i got teased a lot i got called names like stuff like that mm -hmm. but then when i started going in high school like grade nine and above that mm -hmm. i think it was more ableism than bullying yeah it, you know what i mean like it wasn't mm -hmm. uh I'm, I'm using a fake name but timothy is telling me that I can't try out for the cheerleader yeah. team because yeah, right. I can't walk right. Yeah. Like that's yeah. not bullying. That's straight up ableism. That's but no one knows. Ableism. No one knows the, the difference because obviously we're kids. But now that I'm looking at it, it wasn't more bullying. It was more ableism and lack of education in the schools. Of hey, there's going to be kids with disabilities. Yeah, and everything like that. So yeah which is why having an inclusive school, you know, where kids with disabilities are in the classrooms with able-bodied kids is so important. So they get that. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember being in high school and they were always in their own class, you know, so you didn't get to interact with them. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, my daughter is, she's got like, I think two kids in her class that have some kind of like all through her school. We've been to her school many times yeah. for Carlos to speak. And there's, there's, I think, two or three there with CP now, and they just roam the halls, and all the kids are surrounding them, and they're excited yeah. to learn about yeah. them. And yeah, but once you get middle school, can be can be tough. That's a tough. Yeah. Tough and how how do you found yourself that you because you're talking you're talking now about a huge topic which is ableism, but how do you found yourself working towards a better understanding about not getting bothered by um by by the comments like what other people say because even an employee can tell you oh Kira you cannot lift the box if you wanna if you wanna you know carry boxes yeah. on, on your job right how do you yeah. how do you work yourself towards ha having that strong mindset did TikTok help you was it before TikTok uh was it uh when was it or how do you I think Sorry. I think it was after TikTok because mm -hmm. um before TikTok I like I said there was no disability support so I didn't really learn about my like my rights as a disabled individual I didn't learn anything like hey this is actually discriminatory like behavior in the workplace I didn't learn anything like that and it was after TikTok when I followed all those disabled creators that were constantly giving yeah. me like, hey, you need to call this place if you're getting like your boss is 
discriminating you or anything like that. So it it really happened after TikTok. And uh, um, after TikTok, I did move to Red Deer. And that's when I first, like, had my first year living alone with my partner. And Mm -hmm. it was a very eye-opening thing because I was so used to this small town, small-minded. Like, I was used to the ableism. I didn't stop it. Small town thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> going to Red Deer, it was such like eye opening. Uh, the first job that I had at Red Deer was Walmart. I've worked at Walmart mm-hmm. before, and I've I'll say this once again. I'll always say in my videos too that Walmart sh- like advertises that they are willing to adapt and accommodate their yeah. workplace for people with disabilities. But that's one of the worst places I've ever seen for accommodations. Mm-hmm. Um, of like I I'm very tense I have spastic CP so sometimes stairs is like really hard for me to like keep going up and down mm-hmm. and um I was like so is there like a l- lunchroom on the main floor that I might be able to use and going upstairs all the time because it was two flights and they're like oh yeah um I don't know his name but like he was in a wheelchair he was like yeah he goes in this room it was a little closet <laughs> Like, it was so bad. It was like closet was. with a dot. God. And I was like, <laughs> I sat there. And I looked at my boss and I was like, I need to get a new job. So then that's when I worked at Sobe. I moved to Sobe's, literally across the street, too. It was so funny. And they were so, like, so be- like much better at accommodating yeah. me. I don't have any issues with Sobeys except the last couple of weeks because ableism was really, really bad. It came out of nowhere. All my my crew that I was working with were amazing. They treated me mm-hmm. the same. I I loved it there. But then the last couple of weeks I was working there, some lady came in and she did call me a cripple. And no, I, no. <laughs> I was begging her stuff and uh, she she was like, she didn't notice that I was begging with one hand. And she said, oh, I didn't know you are crippled. And I literally <laughs> stopped. I literally threw the stuff down. And I said, excuse me? And she's like, oh, I just I just didn't know. And I was like, no, what did you call me? Oh, and he, no. she's like, um, disabled. And I was like, no, no. you called oh, me yeah, that word. word. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, you can't say that. No, you cannot me. say that. No. And I like I I lost it like I screamed at this lady in my yeah. like on my tail, and she's like oh my god got like my manager involved and fast forward to the next week she came in again and looked for me looked for me oh, right and then the mm-hmm. third time she came in and started yelling at me and I was by myself at the tail and I refused to serve anyone I said hold up I need to leave. I'm so sorry for the people that are in my line that didn't do anything. I'm going to get my yeah. boss. But did you guys not hear her say that to me again? Uh, and one lady looked at me and like said, like, go, like, take care of yourself. Yeah. And that, that night I got two calls of complaints that I wasn't like serving the people in the lineup. When I openly said, hey, she just called me that word. I need to go yeah. get my manager. Yeah. And um fast forward to now, uh I got suspended from Sobeys because I wasn't no. um like no. serving them. And at the time I sat in that freaking office and my boss, I loved her. I loved her and I still do love her. But it, it was her boss that was sending the message to me, like, oh you right. gotta you know, and I sat there and for five minutes, I thought it was my fault. I should have been stronger. I should have, no. I should have kept serving. No, but you know what? Crying. Do you know what? No, because if, yeah, they'll that, never learn. If you no, do, if and you that's do. why people, yeah. that's why people hide. That's why people with disabilities don't speak up because they're so afraid of what's my boss going to say? What's the bigger boss mm-hmm. going to say? What's the corporation going to say? What if I don't get another job? You know, all those different things that you're, that, that you're still putting on your head because you cannot, you don't want to speak up because you're yeah. afraid of other people complaining about you. And that's something that should not happen. When you're telling the people in the line 
Hold on a second. This here I are seeing the lady how she's treating me. I need to go get my my boss. If I was on the line and if Leah was on the line, we would say, "Go for it," and we would not go back home and be like, "Hello, we're complaining. We're complaining. Yeah, be- God, no, oh, we're complaining because she's not serving us." We would probably not even grab the phone and say, "Hello." Uh, we we want to give a compliment to this lady because she, she went to see it, her yeah. mom, how she handled it instead of just saying, oh, she's not serving us. You know what? I find that. Yeah. Sorry if I offend somebody, but I've, I found whoever complained a little bit selfish because yeah, they, shouldn't, they, they shouldn't be. They, sh- they shouldn't be doing that. They should be yeah. empathetic, not sympathetic, mm-hmm. but empathetic. Kind of, yeah. And they were not doing yeah. that. That's something that... Yeah really dis- disappoint me and I mean not gonna bash on Sobeys or anything but it yeah. disappoint it disappoint me from the whoever the decision was to suspend you for for speaking up because mm-hmm. you're not you didn't offend at Sobeys you didn't want yeah. to say Sobeys is bad no you went to say I'm defending myself right yeah. I'm speaking up my rights and they want to. They want to suspend you. I'm sorry, but that's yeah. That's a little. I think your hard. manager could have stood up for you a yeah. little bit too to the yeah. bigger boss. I think there yeah. could have been a little bit of, you know, Change conversation. You know, yeah, and if there's any youth or teenagers or kids listening, please talk to your parents and your grandparents <laughs> yeah. about the proper words yes. to use. We have postcards at the office that have words, you know, of dignity and it's called and it's called words with talk. dignity. Yeah. yeah, words with of mm, yes. So like so yes, please. Cause I know it could be a word that my grandfather, I mean he's 90, 91 or whatever, you know. So I mean I could kind of hear I, I he's said a few words once in a while, but I do understand that but it's because I know him and I know that he does respect everybody. He would mm-hmm. never Oh my God, look at my face. Okay. That, that's all Sorry, right. The sun is like moving around. Um, that's all right. Anyways, um, but yes, like he, I know how he is towards people. He's very caring and stuff, but it's those words that are programmed into them, but mm-hmm. we can always learn. We can always change. Yeah. So yes, any, any grandkids out there, please talk to your grandparents. And <laughs> Not you, using old fashioned words like that. And what you're doing, Kara, with your TikTok, that's helping people know the proper useful for words because if you do a story yeah. about not using the c word i don't even like to say the word that oh, they, I, they I call you it. but not using the c word uh which is not the women's c word but the, 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 the <laughs> dis- disability <laughs> the disability c word uh yeah. it, or the or the r word right like the, that's another oh, yeah. word mm-hmm. that's another word that's that a big should... one that i, oh, always I call hear. people out all the time that's, that's all a... the time yeah in comments mm-hmm. on tiktok even i'm like uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh. no no we don't use that word anymore <laughs> yeah I mean, that's a that's another word that you're not supposed to do. A lot of people, and I can say that for experience in Mexico, people, because I was I was born in Mexico, and people say we have to we're saying this type of words because that's the cultural side of things. And yeah, if saying the C word, it's a cultural side of thing. Does that make it right to say it? No, no. right? No. So no. so if get with if the it, times. If, exactly. Get with the get, get with, with the, the time. Get get with the program. Yeah. Get, yeah. get with the time, right? It's the same thing with the with with the movements that are happening right now with the LBTQ, mm-hmm. with all you know, all those movements started because somebody didn't like or somebody wasn't happy with the way that they were treated. Right? Yeah. yeah. So so it's the same thing with the disability community. People should not be using the C word. It doesn't matter if there are 60 or 70 or 20 it doesn't matter yeah mm-hmm. people need to get with the program and i think what you did you shouldn't feel bad because what you did yeah. with sovies i think it was the right thing yeah. to do i think it was the right thing to do and again that's my opinion and i think that's Leah's yeah, opinion totally. and i'm not bashing again i'm not bashing on sovies i'm just saying that what you did it's it's the proper way to handle it in my opinion so. yeah uh it it's just like when someone is yelling at you or like my boss didn't yell at me. She's like, let me like get my suspension very nicely. I appreciate how kind she was, but I sat there like, oh my God, it's my fault. And then I, I usually shut down when there's so much emotion by me. 
So I literally, I walked across the street, like spent $70 on myself. And I called my boyfriend. I said, he need to come get me. I need to, I need to tell you something. Yeah. And I told him and his face dropped. He was ready to like go in there and not be nice to them. And I was like, no, yeah. I don't. I don't want to fight with it. And he did like make sure that I knew that it wasn't my fault, that yeah. I had the right to not serve whoever I wanted to at that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got Absolutely. the right. Yeah. You don't have okay. to interact with anybody that you don't feel safe. It's a, it's like mm-hmm. a health and safety thing. Like if you don't feel safe doing something, you don't have to do it. Yeah. You know, no. And it w- would have been so simple for a manager or a supervisor to say, you know what, I'll take over your till, you go take a break, and then we'll chat, you know, like, Mm -hmm. there's so many ways that it could have been. And that lady, if you're if you're out there, (laughs) why did she keep coming back? It's like she no, I felt like she was harassing me at a point. And I didn't tell my manager that one point I said she just keeps coming back. Like they were kind of aware of it. I think my big like my supervisor didn't know but all my like little supervisors like the shift managers knew what was going on yeah like it wasn't I wasn't just hiding the fact that this lady like I was talking to a couple customers I'm really chatty at work I better than working but um (laughs) I was I looked back I saw her pass me she looked back looked at me and moved her cart in my till like she wanted to get yeah and I I said no like the second time she came in I said no and she did tell my manager that if uh, if I wasn't going to accept her apology, that she wouldn't shop here. And uh, my supervisor at the time was like, good, we don't want you here. There you go. That's right. And I was like, <laughs> while I was crying on this like sidewalk because I have panic attacks, like, yeah. <laughs> You go, you, girl. <laughs> you, you can you can accept the apology, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna you're gonna like what she what she said, yeah. and you're gonna accept what she said, right? And if she's <laughs> gonna come back and scream at you again and say that say the word that she said, then her apology is not valid, in my opinion, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, me, me uh, if she's listening, I'm sorry, lady, but I think you got to <laughs> you have to get your head straight and check pretty yourself sure your name is Karen. You yeah. Oh she, my god. <laughs> yeah, Pretty like, sure. <laughs> if 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 that's who if whoever you are, if you're listening, I really hope you have to get your head straight and and understand <laughs> properly the 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 words to use properly, right? Because yeah. yeah, it is it is unacceptable what people do, and believe it or not, people still use it. People still yeah. use mm-hmm. it to this day all the time. And yeah. and and they need to stop not for sounding people with disabilities complaining but just because we we want to have our own dignity we want to have our own respect if you're not going to do that then then don't 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 call that to a person with a disability like don't do that mm-hmm. because we like to respect you guys like whoever's mm-hmm. listening to and we're not going to call somebody like for example if leah didn't like the word fat I wouldn't call her fat. If mm-hmm. I didn't exactly. know, if if I didn't know, if if I if I didn't know that Leah is embracing that word, yeah, and and she 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 calls herself fat sometimes. She has yeah. done it in our <laughs> podcast. She call, she's done it in our podcast, so that I know that she's yeah. comfortable. I know that she's comfortable with it. But some people are not, and if some people are not, then you don't use it around those people. You know what I mean? Trying to make mm-hmm. it a non-negative word anymore. Like yeah. for someone to be like, oh, I'm so fat today. It's like, oh, like who cares? Like who cares? Yeah. And I've been doing that yeah. mostly because with that 12-year-old daughter, it's like, I got to be very careful about what I say. And I, I know yes. that when she has kind of talked about it, I'm like, but why does that have to be bad? Like why? why? But it's so ingrained in us. Uh, it's so mm-hmm. hard to get over that. And that's tough. But, it's tough. but that is different and, and that is something different than the C word, right? Because the C word is yeah. not 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 embrace. You don't embrace yeah. it. You don't That's you don't true. embrace it anymore. You don't be like, oh, we're gonna start calling sorry, I'm gonna use the word, but we're gonna start calling creep all to all the persons with disabilities. Yeah. No, right? With the with the fat situation is like it's like people that are overweight are starting mm-hmm. to use it. So then it's it's fine. If later on the C word becomes 
normal, like becomes okay to embrace it, then we will know, right? Because yeah. people, all the movements happen, so then we will know, and then maybe people will start using it. I personally yeah. don't there think are I... some on Twitter, some advocates I've noticed that will use the word crip, something, crip yeah. army, and stuff. Yeah, me if that's too. what they want to do, yeah. that's great for them. Yeah. You know, go ahead and do that. But if you're not comfortable with it, it's, I, I, but I don't think people who are able bodied should be using it. Like that's, oh. it's one of those words where it's like, no, like we don't mm-hmm. need to be using it. But then the debate okay. happens of why do you, why can a person with disability use it and why can a able body? doesn't use it right that's when the debate debate that's that's when the that's when (laughs) that's when the debate happens because yeah we should do that we should get like two view a couple viewpoints and people that have different thoughts and talk about it because it's i mean i'd love to learn more too like i i don't want to be that ally that's like doing it because you know like oh like we shouldn't use it because of this it's not really for me to say but I will tell the, you know, able-bodied community, don't say that word. Like, yeah. don't, because they, I know people that don't like it. So don't, it's like special needs. Yeah. So many people don't want that term anymore, but there are some, some that still use it. It still needs to be phased out a bit more, but um, it's just that whole starting the process of, you know, there are different words you can use. Like there's so many mm-hmm. words in life that we could use instead of the more, uh, you know. Uh, and there are some, some, I mean, I don't know what you think you're in. I want to know your opinion but there are some words that are just gross to use like again mm-hmm. the c the c yeah. word but but i want to know mm-hmm. i want to know for those people who are using it on twitter or like in instagram is how why are you using it what's the context of it and it's not to go against it it's just to have a no, simple it's just to have a simple debate of i want to learn why you're using it so um well the words that i don't like is obviously the c word and then um i usually well, obviously the r word too i mm, i cringe yeah. every single time i hear yeah, it that one's not good and fun fact there's a lot of like older people that i know that's really close to me that says it all the time and i mm-hmm. sit there and i just because it where i am in the like relationship wise it puts me in a weird position and i just kind of like leave the conversation yeah but like those words and um I don't go by special needs I don't like it I it it Mm -hmm. was used for me to be like condescending in a way yeah and I've known a couple like I I have a family friend who has a disability and it does like it affects his speech and like I had one person be like he's not all there hey Mm -hmm. like he's special Uh needs and I said um no, he yeah. is all there. It literally only like affects his speech. And yeah. yeah, he might have the like difference, like he might like playing video games and stuff like that, but that's his personality. Like that's not yes. that's not the disability showing no. in his special <laughs> ways. No. And so that's why I don't like special needs. And I stopped using the word handicapped because I learned the like past. Term, the I, I can't remember everything and I don't want to say it just in case I get it wrong but I don't like the handicap word no me either uh, um. I, I I joke around with the handicap word because I call it the handicapable so you're handicapable <laughs> oh, yeah right? well, that, and you uh, can do that if that's so, what you want to do but yeah but I don't I don't use it I don't like using it but every time I see it on a on a billboard or whatever a yeah. place that is mm-hmm. handicapped i'm like oh look we're handicapable right? <laughs> so, so, so that's, that's good that's good no thing, even but... me i yeah. i try to say accessible parking or yeah. accessible washroom oh, rather yeah. than you know anything else it gets yeah because that word has been staring at us on signs for so long for so but long. yeah i mean so things evolve and if we we're gonna evolve it to something different then why not, you know, to make it Mm -hmm. like just to put a more positive spin on it. And that's what it's about accessibility. Like we need to start yeah, talking more about that, but I do Mm -hmm. before we are, our time is up. I do have to ask, so you have a partner, but I want to know, like you're young, so I don't know how much dating you've done, but like, what was your experience um, with dating with your disability? And was it like something that you would disclose and be like, by the way, or did you just like, I don't even know. You're probably too young to be, like, doing a lot no, of online I, dating. I've, I've had my, like, little blip 
I turned 18 and then I was like, oh my God, freedom. Yep. And so then I started like <laughs> going on Tinder and yes. uh, I didn't disclose. I hid it for the longest time until I had to, you know what I mean? Like until we met, then I disclosed yep. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, my partner, Joey, oh, I can't, I don't know. We weren't dating yet. We were hanging out and we were talking and uh, he was talking about something that was his, he has one of his, like a diagnosis. I'm not going to say just because it, it's his personal stuff. Yeah. And um, I said, oh, I can relate to that with my CP. And he looked at me and he was like, no, like, I'm not kidding. I have this. And I said, <laughs> I'm not I'm not kidding either. And he, <laughs> he pulled a, a picture of a kid with a like wheelchair and he was like, like right. this. Yeah. And I said, oh my, but he said it's so like innocent. Like, right. Like, like yeah. he just like, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I sat there and I was like, oh my God, either I'm going to marry this man or yep. I'm going to kill him right now. <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm just doing. <laughs> and honestly, Joey has been a blessing he's taught me a lot he's taught me how like even in like the bedroom like having a disability is a big part of yeah. that intimate side yeah, sure. and I never I never like expressed any interest in that because I didn't want to be uncomfortable yeah but he like he he took the time to learn about my body like if if I like went to the hospital and no one knew that I had CP and no one knew how to treat right. like treat my body he would know 100% okay no you yeah. can't you can't touch her like that because of this um there was one time we were out with friends and we are we weren't I was sober but he wasn't and my hand is a little smaller than like mm -hmm. my other hand and he grabbed it and for like half an hour he was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> this hand's kind of like small like do you think you have all the bones and stuff in it and I was like uh, you need to go to bed like he's just so like open about it like it's just an open conversation with him and I think that's how it should be um for a while I was like there should be a dating service for uh yeah. like young individuals with disabilities where you could be like hey yo I have a physical disability I'm looking for someone who doesn't have a physical disability or yeah. oh I want to be with someone with a physical disability mm -hmm. having those preferences you know mm -hmm. me, I really wanted something like that and I never got it and I think it's really sad that there's lots of kids well not kids young adults that yeah. still don't have that you know and that's yeah. very important because I mean we have actually somebody that me and Leah know that her his mom approached and asked us about whether we have some, something related to dating stuff or for personal or matchmaking like or stuff like that. And I mean, he's yeah, he's a fantastic guy. He has CP and everything, and I mean, he has conversations with me and Leah all the time in the office. Oh, here when I have the best up, conversation right? with Terry. So, Terry, and, and he listens. He's our other fan he, as he's well. Listening. So. He's a huge <laughs> fan of us. Terry, yes. I was actually at his house on Monday hanging out with mm -hmm. him, and we had a we had a blast, and. uh yeah, like, it's true. We don't have that particular tool of uh, dating, dating that for person with disabilities and even able-bodied people who wants to, because for me, my biggest pet peeve, and this is huge that I had, is like uh, uh, somebody I know that is pretty dear to me says, oh, Carlos, maybe you should date somebody with a disability. And I said, sure, I could. But what if yeah. what if I want to also date somebody with an able body? What's wrong with that, right? Yeah. Why yeah. why do I have to settle for a person with a disability? And most of the people that I encountered are like, oh, because they can relate to you and they can do this and they can do that. I was like, somebody who's able body can relate to you. Somebody can mm -hmm. yeah, who's yeah. able who, yeah. somebody who's able body could be empathetic to your disability yep. uh, you, you know it doesn't have to be you don't have to marry somebody with a disability or you don't have to be a, yeah. with a partner with somebody with a disability you could and I think mm -hmm. it's awesome there's so many gorgeous girls and I mean we have one here but there's so many beautiful yeah. girls who are <laughs> who have a disability right and I'm not mm -hmm. again 
if if I if I match with somebody who has a disability, great. But if I mm -hmm. if I don't, then I can also be be a part of that. And I think what you're saying is a great idea. Why do you don't have a disability service who says, mm -hmm. Hey, I want to date somebody who is able bodied, or I want to date somebody who has a disability. Yeah, you know, like, you know, I'm the, here. The option. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the option. option. Yeah. And there's nothing like that there. There's nothing like that there. And and when you're putting something on, when you're asking to put something like that, like speed dating for a person with disabilities, I think that would be pretty fun. You know, yeah. like, yeah. you know, go on a speed dating side and go around and yeah. see, you know, I think that would be pretty fun for people yeah. who are single, right? And mm -hmm. so I think it would be great. I think we should all <laughs> brainstorm <laughs> and maybe oh, start. We should. Maybe. We should probably yes. make it real fun. <laughs> we could even do like, it doesn't even have to be romantic. We no. could do like friends. Yeah, friends. Uh, yeah. Friend date speed, you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. just like, I, don't know. Oh. I think there should just be more options and more like I'm sorry, but all the able-bodied people have Tinder. They have all of these cool things that are just normal yeah. for them to do. But it it's very it, like I was very insecure going on Tinder or I don't know, like going on a blind date because you don't know if your friend mentioned that you have CP and you might need help cutting your steak. Like mm -hmm. there's so many things that you able-bodied people yeah. probably take for granted oh yeah and there's even like christian mingle like okay so like it's 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 a dating site for people who are christians and want to date other christians why mm -hmm. is it they're a dating site for you know someone with a disability but then you know people who are able-bodied that are like i would date someone with a disability like mm -hmm. like how like you know there's got to be a way to hmm yeah oh, i don't know I I'm think the, we just have to brainstorm. I'm pretty sure so. we do. I'm pretty sure the three of us, we should put ourselves together, our heads yeah. together and try to put something together. Yeah. But we're, we're almost running out of time. We don't want to take too much of your time, uh, Kira, because I know uh, you might have some stuff to do. I We have some stuff to do. But this has been so much fun. I can probably stay here forever, like longer. Oh, longer I know. But, you know no, but, I've got some ideas of how I want to kind of get you more involved. I'll have to email okay. you and stuff, but I want, I want you okay. to yeah, kind of be a bit more, I want you to, yeah, kind of be involved with us a little that bit. That would be awesome. Yeah. I, I would think, really like that. I think be that, so that would be awesome to, to see if you can help. Yeah. Be more involved with our organization yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. Leah, you have one more question that we always yes. ask people <laughs> and I like for you to ask that question because yes. you did a pretty good job with that question. Absolutely. So. Um, of course, life without limits is a big deal, big topic for us to talk about life without limits. So I'd like to ask you uh, what your thoughts are about life without limits and what it means to you. And do you feel you live a life without limits? Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I do. I, I surround myself with like people that will treat me the same. And yeah. I, I think the biggest thing when it comes to looking at my life and how uh, limited I am or anything the one person that taught me that I was in charge of that and only me that I'm only in charge of that no one can tell me my limitations is my mother and I probably mm. think that there's lots of people who are like oh the biggest influence is my mother but in all honesty my mom when we grew up she was a single mom for most of it uh well all of it honestly and she was so young when she had me. And I I know it would have been really hard to hear your only child, like your doctor saying, oh, your daughter might not walk. Your daughter might not right. talk. But she raised me so well. She Like every time mm -hmm. I tried something, he, she said, you can't say I can't because of your disability. Mm -hmm. Now, if you literally can't and you need to like, no, mm -hmm. I can't do this, that's fine. <laughs> but you can't, you can't just not try right. or so I love I like I have memories like when I'm I'm ready to like throw the towel in and be like no I can't do this and like have a pity party for me I can hear my mother's voice like mm -hmm. mm -mm, care for doors don't don't try that pity party <laughs> on me I'm not looking I'm not doing that with you like uh so yeah I think I live I live pretty freely that's awesome mm -hmm. 
That's awesome. Right. That's a That's great good. that's a great answer. Thank you so much, Kira, for that. Uh it reminds me of what you said, a comment of like I surround myself with people that treat me properly, that treat me the same. You know, my coworkers treat me the same here. Uh as I don't think they they never treat <laughs> sometimes, me. Sometimes sometimes a little too Yeah, sometimes <laughs> a little a little too close in the line. No. But even <laughs> even the girl that I like at the moment, uh she's staying with me. And I think yesterday or the day before, she's always been like, Carlos, can you bring me some water? Or can you uh, like yesterday <laughs> yesterday, can you pour some ice cream for me? You know, and, and there's some so some other people that then used to ask me that because they're like, oh, it's too hard for Carlos to do it. Right. But 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 she does it. She's like, you can do it. I'm sitting. Yeah. I'm sitting in the couch. I'm too. Um, I don't want to get up, right? Uh, yeah. Or I'm sitting in the couch. I cannot get up at the time. I could get up, but I don't want to get up. You're in the kitchen. Could you please bring me? <laughs> can you please give me some ice cream? Sure. Yeah. There's no problem with that. You grab a scoop. You put the ice cream on, you put whatever, and just give it to her, right? So that's something that she might not realize it, but it's helping you to be like, hey, they're treating me properly well. Not like, oh, I'll do it for you. You know what I mean? So yeah. so when, when that happens, and, and then you talk about your mom, which is having my mom's voice is always, that's why I came to Mexico the way I did, uh, from Mexico the way I did, because... I said to my parents, see you later. Bye. It's not like I don't like you. <laughs> yep. But it's the same thing. It's the, it's the same thing you experience. And that's pretty cool of, you know, having your mom, your mom's voice here or your dad's voice here saying, yeah. not that you can't, but you can do things on your own. Right. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for reminding us how to live a life without limits in, in, in your proper way. And, yeah. uh, and and that's I always love this question because there's always so many different answers. Uh, the previous episode was amazing as well with the answer, and same with this answer. It's been fantastic. Thank you, I Kira. Like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Carlos yeah, fell at the you. office one time. One time, Carlos fell at the office, and none of us did anything. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. You remember that? that? The we, bones... It was just I don't know. It was funny. We all thought it was funny how none of us like did anything. Yeah. Like, because he fell and he's like, I'm okay. And we're like, all right. The, 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 okay, bye. the one volunteer coordinator is like, remember that? Hey, he went yeah. out of the office. He he looked at me and like, oh. And <laughs> he they just walked away. And I don't like, know. It was just this funny thing that happened. And then, of course, we helped you get up after. But it was just this funny thing how we were like, no, we're yeah. not helping you, Carlos. <laughs> It was it it's all it was hilarious. It was really it really was. hilarious. I have to say, but thank you so much. Uh, it it made my day to have this podcast today. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for that. Thank you, Leah, for your time. Thank you, Leah, for being here. Oh, uh, right. Kira, thank you for reaching out. Thank you for being a huge fan. And yes. uh, <laughs> please, just like Kira, if you're out there, you're listening. If you know someone reach out i know it may be a little bit scary but we're not scary we are pretty no. welcoming <laughs> we do we do things very chill uh we would love to have more people we would love to have more stories uh about you about the disability community about all the different things make sure you pass the word around and we are very excited to continue doing this uh leah have so much fun and wherever you're going uh, make sure you bring something for the entire <laughs> office. Make sure you bring something for the entire office. And uh, I've heard that Vegas is ranked one of the most accessible places to visit. So I'm technically I'll go. I'm going for research. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well, take some Don't pictures. Us. <laughs> take some pictures, maybe, and and see if it's yeah, true. Yeah, like, oh look, this is accessible. Yay! But no, I we're going for our friend's fiftieth birthday. My husband and I are going. So. Fun. Just for a nice little few days. Fun. Well, have fun. Nice. Say hi to Dan for us. And Kira, once yes. again, thank you so much. And please remember to live your life without limits and enjoy yourself. We'll talk. We'll talk everybody very soon. Thank you. You betcha. Bye. Thank you. Bye.